Well, some new information on the story that is everyone talking today. A passenger on a United Airlines flight dragged off the plane after it was overbooked. United offered passengers $400, then $800 to take a later flight. No one stepped up. So this man was one of four people chosen apparently at random. He refused to get off the flight and was forcibly removed. And that's what you're seeing on your screen. The United Airlines CEO offering this statement saying, quote, this is an upsetting event to all of us here at United. I apologize for having to reaccommodate these customers. Our team is moving with a sense of urgency to work with the authorities and conduct our own detailed review of what happened. We are also reaching out to this passenger to talk directly to him and further address and resolve this situation. Joining me now, Bob Bianchi. He's a criminal defense attorney and former head prosecutor. Also, Phil Holloway, criminal defense lawyer and former police officer and legal advisor to the Georgia's uh, Sheriff's Department. It's nice to have you both. Um, Bob, I'm curious about that statement. I apologize for reaccommodating customers. <laughs> if that's what reaccommodating looks like, I never want to be reaccommodated ever. You know, Jenny, I'm in a business consulting group that deals just with this with businesses and companies and how to message something like this. You should be transparent. You should say there's going to be an investigation. But when you use fuzzy words like reaccommodate, when a guy is being treated worse than you are, the overhead uh, overhead baggage that's uh, being dragged out of there, you can't use those kind of words. I think it was very uh, inappropriate for them to do. And I think that there were a million other ways that they could have handled this situation. I, I don't think that that statement helped them at all. Okay. I, and I'm curious how that statement would come into a case, Phil, but let's back up for a second. Does this passenger, I mean, he's getting dragged off the plane. Show the video. It's crazy. Does he have a case against the airline or does he have a case against the security? Does he have a case at all? Well, if you, in, in terms of the security officers and the police officers, it's kind of like them responding to a major league ball game where security says, look, um, you know, you, you've got to go because management wants you out. It's not really security's job to second guess whether or not someone should or shouldn't be kicked out of the ballpark. So what they're doing, they're simply responding to management's or United Airlines' request to have somebody removed from the plane. But I put the blame squarely on the airlines because what they're trying to do, and it was, in, it was reflected in the statement by the CEO, they're trying to spin this as something called the, a denial of boarding, which is really something that has to occur at the gate when flights mm. are oversold under the contract of carriage. So this is a refusal basically to let the guy fly. He was already seated and under the contract of carriage, his rights are much stronger. He basically has to be presenting a safety issue at the point they try to remove him well, or committing some kind of misconduct against the Let me read that, let me read that because crew. I think a lot of us don't read the fine print, uh, Bob, when we're, we're right. buying a ticket. And here's what the contract to carriage states. United Airlines shall have the right to refuse to transport or shall have the right to remove from the aircraft at any point any passenger for the following reasons. And if you look further down on the statement that we all agree to when we buy a ticket, it's passengers who fail to comply with or interfere with the duties of the members of the flight crew. So does that fall, does this fall under that, that the crew is trying to do its duty the passenger said no, but he was in violation of this rule. No, I agree with Phil. It's very clear. He had already boarded the plane, so the policy is also clear under the CFRs and the laws that he has to be given written notification and an explanation as to why he's being removed and what the policy is from United. So you got two areas of liability here. One is against United for not following the law. To me, that's a no-brainer. They're in trouble for that. But wait a and minute, Bob. He this is, let me read the rule again. United Airlines shall have the right to refuse to transport right before you get on the plane or shall have the right to remove from the aircraft at any point. Yeah, but those are those things are listed for people that have very specific reasons why the flight crew believes they're a danger. Remember what happened here, Jenna? This is because they booked four flights for employees and took a paying customer off. And the manner in which they took that paying customer off, even if the policy allowed it, was inappropriate. Uh, plain and simple. I don't see them getting around that at all under the law. And then the use of force that are used by the enforcement authorities was clearly excessive. Here's the bottom line. If I were a passenger, Jen, and I had to come to Fox News, they did no triaging. W did you have to go to a hospital? Did you mm -hmm. have to Did you have to go to a funeral? Did it, this whole thing about a lottery system without asking whether you have connecting flights or anything like that is absolutely well, a poor it, policy. It underscores the broader point, right? When you get on an airplane, it's very easy to feel that you actually don't have any rights, right? I mean, it's one of those businesses when you get on it, you feel somehow very vulnerable, Phil. And so it br brings up the broader question which is what are your legal rights as a passenger of a plane? Can an airline just remove you for any reason when they screw up and overbook? 
Well, what they can do if they're overbooking, and what they should have done in this case is they should have handled it at the gate. Because when, you, when you're at the gate before you're seated, they have a lot more discretion. Uh, and basically, you don't have security having to come into a close quarter situation like in the coach section of an airline, which we all know is really, really close. And, and if you have any kind of physical altercation, it's very likely somebody's going to get hurt. You know, when I was in law enforcement, uh, I've been involved in situations not on airliners, but we've had to go and respond to private property to remove somebody who didn't want to go. And if they physically resisted, then we had to use some degree of force. I didn't see the police pounding on this person. I didn't see him getting beaten. I think I believe that he was accidentally injured um, on the handrail or the armrest. Uh, I didn't really see the police doing anything excessive in terms of excessive force. So I do disagree a little bit on that point. But this should have been handled at the gate. They could have let the air crew get into a car and drive the four or five hours to Louisville. They could have mm. offered more money. They could have done lots of other things rather than call the police on somebody who was simply minding his own business trying and, to get home. And the bottom line here is they did not follow the, code, follow the code of federal regulation, which specifically requires that before you remove a passenger, you have to state to them what their rights are. And the reason they have that is maybe the person would understand when they saw the policy, they saw their rights, they understood what they were legally entitled to do or not to. Look, Jen, if I had to come to Fox News the next day and they told Bob Bianchi that you can't go, they would have been dragging me down that aisle. <laughs> and I would not want to see that. Although if it does happen to you, we want an exclusive, just you, saying. You got we'll it. See. <laughs> well, we'll see where this goes next. If there'll be a lawsuit, $800 is what United Airlines offered. It might cost them a lot more. Uh, we'll see. Bob, Joe, great to have you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. The governor of Alabama forced to...